Yoko here. Welcome to LA Spectacular Life. Oh my God, I am so honored to have my next guest and I love him to death. I met him in a movie pr uh, premiere and I just fell in love with him. And I want to tell you something. I saw him without a shirt and I was just like, <laughs> I just, I was just like, what the heck? So I just loved him since, I mean, I kind of fell in love with him that, that at the moment, you know, because I was just like, he had the guts to do what everybody else is doing in Hollywood. And he's a, a proud Latino, he's Mexican. And I want to introduce you to my good friend, Guillermo Ivan. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for Absolutely. having me. Absolutely. You know that I love you since the moment I saw you on, 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 on screen, on the big screen. And then we had an interview with him. It was just like, hmm, hold on, let me just. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, you know, you guys know I'm married, but. It was so awesome to see you on the big screen, such a beautiful person that you are. And I just appreciate you being here with me because I, this is what I want to do. I want to showcase all the Latin, Latinos that we are here in Los Angeles and we are kicking ass and mm. you are one of them. So thank you so You're much. You're one of them. I got to come here every week after <laughs> that introduction. I mean, this is amazing. No, thank you so much. And speaking of falling in love, I fell in love with her as well. I mean, what you're doing, just opening new, new places like this, you mm -hmm. know, like virtual places where you can showcase Latinos and, 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 and bring more opportunities and just show the world that if you, if you dream it, if you see it, you can do it. I mean, there is nothing in front of you that will obstruct your dream at all. You know, it's just you and yourself. So, you know listening to you, listen to your, your goal with this, with Alfredo, you know, and, and seeing so much talent around. Uh -huh. I mean, I was seeing the guests that you had before and it was like, <laughs> wow, I gotta, you know, they raised the bar so high, I gotta do something here. <laughs> no, but, so let's talk about you. So how did you start in this crazy world of entertainment? Uh, it's a funny story. Um, Tell us, we I have was, enough time. You know, I was, I was, when I was a kid, well, first of all, my mom, my mom was into music. She oh, was a musician. What kind of music? Classical music and jazz. Oh. So That's why you're a dancer. That's one of the reasons why Ooh, I'm a dancer. Yeah. Okay. So music was always important in my life. Okay. And my father is a painter. He's an artist mm -hmm. to this day. And he's a production designer as well. So... They, Here in the United States or in Mexico? In Mexico. Oh, Mexico. wow. So okay. they met in the art school. Oh. That's how they met. Oh, my God. So, but yeah. How old were they? They were like 20-something. They, yeah, 24, 25, okay. something okay. like that. Okay. But yet, I wanted to be an athlete. I wasn't doing sports. Of, okay, what kind of athlete? I was doing 200 meters. Um, Dude, I was 100 meters. Really? Oh. I was doing 200 and I, I was doing 400. Okay. Let yeah. me just tell you, I went to nationals to Mexico City because... Really? Yes, because I did, um, I wanted to go to the Olympics. Of course, I wanted to I wanted to go to the Olympics. <laughs> you see what <laughs> This is so cool. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I didn't make it because, of course, you know, I mean, it's like, they're, they're I mean... Yeah. There's so much talent out of there. Of course. And yeah. I went to Mexico City to the Nationals, like I said, you know, and tried for the Olympics. I didn't make it, but I tried. I was just like, yeah. who can say that, that you tried for the Olympics? Of I don't course. even remember what year was that. I don't even want to remember. We don't want to remember <laughs> those kind of, you know, let's not go there. So I let's know. go back to the story. Okay, so anyway, I sorry. was into sports. Uh -huh. And I was playing soccer as well in Mexico with this team Pumas. I mean, <gasps> Pumas. So I was playing soccer with my. Okay, best for you all, American, you know, ¿cómo se llama? The American, ¿cómo se llama? America. America. Oh, los, los Americanistas, los Americanistas y los, <laughs> los Chivas. Chivas. Sí, 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 sí. So I was okay, into so Pumas. So I, I was playing, but um, funny enough, when I was six years old, we went we went on vacation with with my parents to Guadalajara. Okay, I love and Guadalajara. And they were shooting a movie. So I was actually walking in the, in the park with my, with my dad and with my mom. And they happened to know somebody from the production team. Oh, my God. And I was, you know, I was just walking. And at that time, I was like this. I was gordito, you know. I was gordito. And yeah. I was like, 
and, and they wanted to have a, a gordito yeah. like me, a funny kid, you know, just saying vieja loca. That was the line. Just crazy woman, right? Uh -huh. So uh, somebody from the production, I, I, they were friends with my mom, I believe, or something. Okay. So, you know, they said hello and whatever, and, they, and they, then they go like, can, can, we, can we have your kid? Oh, my God. And in the movie, saying this line. Yeah. And my mom was like, well, you got to talk to him. I don't know if he wants to do it or not. He wants so to they, be on they the had movie. a conversation with me. I said, yeah, why not? Uh -huh. And I did it. And then they shot another one. And they called me. And then, you know, another one. And then <gasps> they, it became like this thing. So I started acting when I was six in Mexico. Wow. Doing movies and then soap operas and whatever. But yeah, he, my okay. dream was to be. He, yeah, an, no. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah. I was with all the soap operas with the tears and the whole oh, thing. No. You know, the I love you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I would die for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I went there. So, uh -huh. um, but 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 still, I kept training and I wanted to be an athlete. This is so funny because you you and I we met in the red carpet mm -hmm. of Roomba Love. Yeah, I was your is, host. I was doing the, uh, you were the that host, social media. Correct. Yeah. And By the way, we got so many hits. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a movie I wrote inspired. You wrote that? I wrote the, the okay, movie. Okay, so you wrote it? I wrote the movie. I directed the movie. And I, yeah, and <gasps> I, was, I, was, I was playing the lead. See, that you guys, that's why this show is so important to me. Because I want you to see him, <laughs> you know? Someone that started at six years old. Back in Guadalajara, he had no idea he was going to come to Hollywood, mm. you know, and then became or is becoming a huge Mexican actor. And by the way, action actor, because you know how to kick ass. Too, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of those. <laughs> okay, so let's move forward a little bit. Yeah. So you saw that at six years old and then you became, it gave you the bug of, Acting. So something happened then, when I was six. It, this okay. is this is actually the, the first time I had a thought in my mind. Okay. I was six years old and I was with with my parents and we were watching a movie. Okay. Awakenings with Robert Nero and Robin Williams. Robert De Niro is one of my first. My actually, same here. Yeah. Okay. So this is about you. So let's not talk about. So this. no, so, I, yeah. I was watching a movie and I was so impressed mm -hmm. by De Niro's performance because it's a heavy movie. Oh, very. It's very. a you know the. You know, it's a very, very deep mm -hmm. movie. And I was, I was six and I was mesmerized by what they both were doing on the screen. You weren't scared? I wasn't. No, I, w I was just, I was impressed. And I remember the, the movie was, was over and I had tears in my eyes and I turned to my mom. And for the first time I said, I, I, wanna, I, want, I wanna do that. Oh my but again, it was just a thought. Yeah, it yeah. was just, you know, I was still with, a, you know, with the idea of, you know, sports and whatever. And, um, you know, when I was 14, funny enough, you came, I, I was telling you, you came, we met in Rumba Love's mm -hmm. premiere, and I wrote that movie in honor to my best friend who was an athlete and passed away. And that so happened to me. Story. That's a true story. That happened to me when I was 14 years old. Oh, my God. I lost my best friend. I had no idea. And I couldn't come back to, to training because, you know, I, you know, I felt an empty space, you know. Yeah. And coincidentally, I shot a movie in Mexico called La Primera Noche that, first that beca night. became a thing and went to Cuba and they offered me a scholarship. Okay, so, okay, wait, wait. So you went to Cuba because, you know, we know Cuba is super, you know, close to a lot of things. Yeah. How did you, how did you get to, from Mexico to Cuba? Though? They, they got me a scholarship, the, the, the government from Cuba. Really? So yeah. they saw you on the movie? It was an, it, uh, so Cuba has a, well, back, back in the 90s, well, to this day, I would say, but back in the 90s, in, in, in 2000s, um, there was a very important film, international film festival okay. in Cuba. And they, they used to have one of the greatest schools uh, for filmmaking and acting, okay. San Antonio Los Baños, that was, found, was created by Francis Ford Coppola oh. and by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Okay. So, you know, it, it, was, it was an amazing opportunity. So they, they watched the movie in a mm -hmm. film festival. 
So and wait, you, so me, you left Mexico at 14 years old, went to Cuba. I was actually 12 the <gasps> first time. Oh yeah, and yeah. Then, How did you do that? I mean, you're still a baby. I was, I was, and it changed my life because I went through starvation. Yeah. Poverty. Absolutely. Wait, like, wait. So I, when you went to Cuba, they didn't give you everything. They was just like, no, you're gonna start from the beginning. Even if zero? they give you everything in Cuba, everything is nothing. Like you know, we had nothing. <clears throat> like, like. Literally, sometimes, like, I, I, my food for days was sugar with water. Like, that was my, my, my food, me and my friends. Or, you know, we used to have, like, picadillo de cascara de plátano. That was, like, we would take, like, the banana mm -hmm. and chop it up yeah. and cook it. We, we would just cook it as if it was me, just to feel that we were having picadillo or something, yeah. you know, because... The situation was really, really bad at that time. So, but that was that. Was funny enough, those years were probably my happiest years because. Well, yeah, because you're a kid, you don't give a yeah. crap of what you're eating. And it was all know? about creation, and uh, you know, in the school, it was not just acting; it was acting, dancing. You know, you had the musicians, you had the, you know, the artists, and we would just come together and just create something. You know, and and it was a constant. Uh, learning you know, experience. learning, and it was the, the, there was this dynamic, this energy going on all the time that would make us create cre or you know inspire us to to create, okay. and it was phenomenal. So, do you play any other instruments? No, I was playing the drums. Mm -hmm. I was doing the, some the rumba. <laughs> I was doing some rumba, yeah, yeah. and I was dancing a lot of salsa and uh -huh. rumba. Yeah. And I was actually teaching people from Germany and from whatever, how to dance salsa oh my at that time, and it was incredible. Yeah. And yeah, so I spent almost eight years in Cuba, and then I came back to Mexico. Okay, so you went to Cuba at 12, you, can, you stayed there for eight years, so you came back here at 20, here yeah. in the United States? No, to Mexico first. Oh, to Mexico. Yeah, and then... Now, so how, you, how did you get to United States? Because I went back to Mexico, and from one day to another, I started doing a lot of movies and yeah. soap operas again, but now I was 20. Guillermo! The Guillermo, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But I wanted, to, I wanted to keep training myself. I wanted to keep learning, and, yeah. and I applied for another scholarship in New York at HB Studio, and oh, wow. they got me a scholarship. So, so tell us a little bit about that, because I want people to understand and to know that even though you're in another country, you can probably apply to some sort of scholarship so they yeah. can be able to come to United States yeah. and, and do that. Sure. So Arts are probably one of the most difficult fields to get a scholarship, or at least in my generation, okay. it used to be like that. But yeah, you can do it, of course. And uh, the HB, for instance, is one of those institutions that they, they, they were very well known to, because they've been supporting uh -huh. foreign, foreign talents okay. to come here and to you know, study and, and, and learn. And, and I was, for, you know, fortunately I was one of them. So for two years, I, I came to well, full time. I can just imagine, you know, it's like putting a movie on my head and just like from 12 years old, you went to Cuba and then you come here and then, so fast forward to now, what are you doing now here in the United well, States? I'm making movies. Or, or, or more, 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 okay, not in the United States, here in Hollywood. Yeah. You know, because I want, I want people, and the reason why I ask you all those questions is because I want them to know that it's not easy to just, yeah. oh, I'm going to go to Hollywood and I'm going to become a star. Sure. Well, no, that's not what it happens. You still have to go to school. Yeah. Yes, you have to have a, a lot of talent, you know, yeah. because you need to know the back story of everything you're playing. But at the same time, that, that is like a motivation for people to come and do what we're doing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you said it right. And I, I think that what you're doing, for instance, you know, just doing everything, like putting a team together, you know, a concept, producing, doing, that's a way to go, mm -hmm. especially nowadays, I believe, you know, yeah. because you have, as an artist, you have to, you have to do, you mm -hmm. have to do all the time. And you, the best learning process is that one that allows you to have failures as well, to fall down. And I think, to, you know, when you have failures, that's what you learn the most. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. 
<laughs> no, no, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, you have to fail and you have to stand up and do it again and learn the lesson and then, and then you know, keep learning, keep preparing yourself and you know, doing more and more and more. And that's the only way, because if, especially as an actor, if you just sit down and, and wait for a phone call. That's not gonna it might happen. never come. Yeah. It might never come. So what are you working on right now? So we finished uh, Roomba Love. Roomba Love is still going to film festivals and everything. Then um, I have two new movies coming up. One of them is an action movie. You were talking about action. One of them is an action movie that was produced by Sony. And um, uh, so it's me and, and Michael J. White. I love him. Yeah, him. he's really cool. He's one of my he's favorite really actors. Cool. Yeah. yeah, and then um, uh, I have another one called Dopamine as well. We're in the midst of production. We shot the first part of it, and then we're going back on set in a few weeks. Uh, and I'm going to start shooting a new movie two weeks from now as well, also an action movie oh, cool. <laughs> in New Mexico. But but you're very famous on Netflix because there's a oh, really yeah. big big series there that everybody's there's watching a, right now. There's a show uh, called El Desconocido, yeah. or, <laughs> <laughs> or the yeah. unknown hitman, and yeah, it was it became uh, very popular, especially in the Latino of world. Of course, and, and that's why we're doing this because we want them to, we want you to, we want we want to showcase you so they can go and watch you, you know, mm -hmm. especially on Netflix. Netflix right now is just like crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, forget about, it. okay, don't get me wrong, the big studios are great, but you know what, like you said, we can create our own content 100%. and go for it. Yeah. Because we, we're not gonna be waiting for someone, I mean, especially me at my age, Latina, with accent, you know? They're probably not gonna call me, mm -hmm. so it's like, why not create our own content? You know. Look, I mean, what what many people forget is that Hollywood was born like that. I mean, Hollywood was created originally by artists coming together by Charlie Chaplin. But then it changed and because of the then money. Then it changed because of the middleman and yeah. the money and the industry and whatever. But the reality is that if we go back to you know, the very beginning of this, United Artists and, you know, the, the history of Hollywood, uh -huh. it was created by artists coming together and, and doing things by yeah. themselves. Exactly, yeah. And then it became an industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and the studio model and whatever, which is great and, you know, nothing against that. But all I'm saying is now that we have access to the media, mm -hmm. that it's so easy to shoot something, edit something, put it out there, create an audience, you know, it, it, we should be doing that. Mm -hmm. Everybody in and, and that's that to me, it's inspiring as well for mm -hmm. new, especially for new, new generations, yeah. because now you don't have to sit and wait. Mm -hmm. You can create your, your own opportunities. And, and if you create your creative community as well, if you start mingling with people who have the same vision and, and if you start coming together and doing things together, it's all about that. That's the origin of Hollywood, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let's not forget that, you yeah. know, especially now, let's come together and especially as Latinos, for instance, you know? And we Latinos have a tradition of separation, especially in the States, unfortunately. Like, if you look back 10 years ago, mm -hmm. we were almost like, kicking each other, you see what I'm saying? Now I feel like finally we're coming together. together. Finally yeah. we're like, hey, let's Come do over. something. Yeah, let's Why do something. don't we do something? Yeah. Why don't we create? Why don't yeah. we tell stories that break the stereotype of Latinos, you know? Yeah. Not, yeah. not everybody's a maid or a, a narco dealer, you know what yeah. I'm saying? There are so many stories of yeah. Latinos, you know? And, and this is the right time, I believe. I think so too, and that's why, you know, behind me it's a great team and, um, and, and I just appreciate so much that they believe in me because I wanted so bad to have this mm -hmm. and, and to create and to bring all the Latinx together and say, hey, this is what we can do instead of saying or tearing each other apart like, you suck and you this and you that. No, let's, let's, let's you know, 
come together mm -hmm. and, and create a lot of things and, and you know, let's, I mean, come on, Latinos here, in, especially here in Los Angeles, it's probably like 70%, Yeah. you know? Yep. And, and, and the thing is like, we don't see each other on TV. Mm -hmm. We don't see each other on, the, on, on you know, on, on, on shows. Yep. And that's why when, when the producer and director approached me and he was like, why don't we do this? And I'm like, at the beginning I was a little bit scared because I'm like, oh my God. But you know, now I'm like, yeah, this let's is do the it. way. Let's of do course. it. Let's do it. Yeah. You know, I mean, let's let's showcase all the Latinos that we are here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. That you know, if you guys are from somewhere else, call me, DM me, and you know what? I mean, let's bring you in. Let's talk about what you're doing because we want to help you. We want to succeed. We want to be on the top. We don't want anybody to feel that oh well, because I'm this, I'm that, I'm brown, I'm this. You know who? Cares. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can be yellow, blue, whatever, you know. You're a human being. It doesn't being. matter. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, you know. Yeah. And so I really appreciate you coming into this show because you're such an inspiration, not only for myself, but for everybody else that is watching us. And so I really, really, really appreciate it. So thank you so much thank for coming. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're very welcome. So I'm your host, Norma Boco, here in LA Spectacular Life. So wait for us for another episode because we want to bring you the best of the Latinos here in Hollywood and everywhere else. So please contact us so we can showcase you, okay? So I love you and I see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.